the answer to chess. The concept that new up and coming superstars of chess actually use against the old guard without actually even realizing it this is what they actually do to actually shock and surprise the old guard they go for simplicity uh, uncomplicated strategies uncomplicated movements and they just keep it nice and simple which throws the old guard off because the old guard are constantly practicing new ways of of maneuvering around the board and then negate really the essence of what chess is about yes they're really good they're really clever they're fantastic they're doing magical moves not slagging them off saying the rubbish or anything like that but looking at how they actually get beaten this is how they get beaten by people using simple moves against them simple concepts simple ideas and um, so i think if they kept those simple ideas in their mental rolodex and use the fancy stuff only really if it was necessary then they wouldn't get beaten or shot by any new fledglings that are around it's a weird concept and i'm probably going to get shot down for actually mentioning it but it's the fact of life the amount of research that i've done to find out how it is that the young people new people beat the grandmasters and um, it's got that same picture that same pattern about it that shock factor of well how can that person do such a simple move against me and actually win it's because they've gone well yeah this is a simple process it's it's there's nothing complicated about it let's capture this here looking for the exchange let's grab here Knight's not got any protection on it, could potentially get trapped, so I need to get this moved out of the way. But again, yes, so he's attacking, so I'll we'll go here, attack the bishop, and capture back. So we have a nice position at the moment, I think. I'm just going to bring this rook here, supporting the pawn. Don't think this pawn's going to last too long. I'm just going to push it up here. Just going to push it there. Bad push down. If he pushes down, that's probably worse for them. He's probably looking to push this pawn so his rook can actually come and attack this pawn here. This bishop. So they're running low on time now. So yeah, he does push past. So that's um, a good thing for us. Dark square bishop now just putting a little bit of a check on the king, pressuring the king area a little bit. Does have these pawns here, so I might just push this f pawn just to uh, get some breathing space. Let's just push this f pawn up. He might not take, just push, but he's got two pawns, so I'll take one of them. Yeah, he does capture, which is nice for us. Let's just push onto this pawn here. I think you can see what I'm attempting to try and do. Which so put a bit more pressure on this pawn, holding his knight to ransom in a sense on this side. And let's just grab here now. Might want his bishop attacking our rook just to say he's doing something. So he's supporting the pawn. And that's a nice touch. We could could go here but he's just going to push his pawn down but I suppose in a way we can push onto this pawn here and he's not wearing any of them apples he wants our bishop let's go here with the bishop now attacking this pawn 2 on 1 he's got 10 seconds left so there's not much for them to do in that sense so in this game we've kept it simple let's uh, go here it's going to take our bishop off the board, which is fine. We can take his bishop with a check. And they've run out of time. So the simplification of the game is a key element in the answer process. It's understanding how to attack with the answer process. And it's also learning how to defend with the answer process. And new people beating grandmasters, national masters, any type of master... Um, understand this process 
and there's nothing magical about it and it's just a matter of keeping the basics I suppose it's like in any sport um, if you get too technical and you go too far with your training and you forget the purpose of what it is that you're there to do then somebody who comes along who has maintained the purpose of what they are meant to do and like a sprinter, like a, a boxer, a martial artist, anybody, if they lose track of what it is that they're meant to be doing, if they're meant to be a champion and they trained to be a champion up to a certain point and then they change their training to say, well, I don't need to train as hard now because I can beat X, Y and Z people dead easily. But then you've got somebody who's training night and day, day and night on specifically being able to win constantly, keeping it simple. They're not putting any fancy um, training tools in place. They're not going out there partying. They're not there slacking or anything like that or thinking, right, I'm going to do a fancy move because then they always respond this way. No, they basically keep it simple. They keep it real. And that's how they end up winning. So champions out there or high level players out there, you've got to be wary. You've got to be wary of the the new people that are coming in who want to improve and they're focused on their games. They're using the answer and they're keeping it real. They're not doing fancy dancing moves, they're keeping it real and that's how you'll end up getting beat by lower rated players. Oh yes, okay. So again, focusing purely on the answer concept all the way through the game all the other mantra stuff is so key and so in integral to the answer I like that look at this it's going for massive attack now how would you deal with that you go for that position that I don't like I really don't like this position um, we're going to go through it anyway and he's gone for the simple response to that, so that's okay. And just going to grab here, tuck in the queen. Doesn't doesn't have to capture, yeah. Okay, so we can now go and attack this pawn here, attacking his rook. He'll probably come and greedy munch down. So we could actually go and castle, but if we castle queen side this pawn could go but the queen is defending it's attacking our knight let's go on queenside castle looks like we've got areas covered off now he's got his king in front of the pawn that the queen is actually targeting could just put a little touch onto the knight smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong smaller piece again attacking a higher piece can't be wrong got to be careful where you're potentially sending the piece that you're attacking to because if it's doing a roundabout like this knight it's hiding now into this corner attacking this pawn the queen is still protecting this pawn if we went and attacked his queen his queen would take our knight here if we attack his knight with our knight we do have a pawn here protecting but he's looking to double our pawns up anyway so we might as well go for that they'll feel happy that they doubled the pawns Great, okay, so now we've got a nice situation. Let's bring the knight through here, put, sorry, the bishop through. He's probably not, he's not gonna be happy with that. Move his knight maybe to here or something. Yeah, oh, look at that, can they hear me? This poor bishop is being held to ransom at the minute. Yeah, so now we're actually just going to grab, but I suppose he could bring his rook. But we'll capture the bishop, attacking the pawn and the knight at the same time. So what he doesn't want to lose his knight, but have we sent the knight to a dangerous square? Looks like we're covered on that side, so we could actually capture this pawn and look to try and come around the back now with the rooks, as you know, maybe the back rank type area. He does have this knight protecting this area, but we could potentially shoo it away. So we're going to come here first to make them think about the back rank. Maybe they'll do something extra, might move his king. In the meantime, we'll push onto the knight to get rid of the knight. Got to be careful where we're putting it, but again, it doesn't really seem to have many squares to jump to without it being captured. 
because it's blocked there if it goes here if it goes there the pawn takes it. if it goes here the pawn takes it so the knight is kind of trapped so there might be a scratching moment where he goes for a rook exchange maybe not then okay we'll capture he wants to keep his rook here protecting this pawn but we do have two linked pawns now he does have these pawns jumping down looking to get promoted and I'm gonna just challenge this pawn here and he does capture so we can now just bring the rook here with a check and it's going to be checkmate in next move so that was um, a simple process of using the answer with the supporting mantra um, concepts all the way through and let's have a look at the analysis okay see how we're faring it felt okay brought the knight out and the other knight nice simple opening some people would say that's old school you know just bringing the knights out I really don't care if it's effective and efficient it, and it works um, I've got no issues if we end up in this position which I really don't like then fair dues there are different continuations to this which make white really more strong and black is really defending all the time but our opponent this time didn't do that yeah so they went for the simplified version so we brought through and through and attacked like I said we could have gone for the um, rook area but for well let's go on queenside castle everything seems to be covered off attacking a higher piece with a smaller piece it's actually saying take the pawn with the knight and the queen would take would I lose out and it's showing it as an advantage let me just run through that it's showing an advantage for what? Uh, white oh because he gets the knight back in the corner here oh fancy stuff gotta be mindful of that oh good right okay yeah so I should have protected the knight really okay fair enough pushing up and we're in a better state now and we bring the knight back doesn't like that yeah, but we've doubled the pawns, but we're fairly comfortable. And now we've got a two on one on the pawn. And just grabbing nice and safely, nothing fancy, nothing arty. All basic concepts which really work, you know. There's basic concepts in every game of chess. Uh, if you go fancy, then you're trying to trying to be what's unique or whatever, but unique sometimes really doesn't cut it when a simple move would suffice. And yeah, so now this is all pretty straightforward stuff going for the checkmate. Okay, so fancy dancy has its place. If you're looking to be arty, then be mindful that somebody who's practical and straightforward um, will basically not be interested in any of your fancy stuff and they'll just basically do simple moves on you. And you'll wonder how they beat you. And this is how I believe like the youngsters who are coming up in chess for many years and they end up beating grandmasters and then people go well how did they beat them the grandmaster's been around a while they know all of the tricks and stuff and this is why they get beat by the youngsters because the youngsters have gone well why did they do all of that fancy stuff when this simple move works here this simple move works here you know and their concepts are, their concepts are simple the concepts are straightforward and will be tied the day where the youngsters then start doing those fancy moves and, and negating um, the simple aspects of the game that's where then the youngsters underneath them will then be taking them down because the youngsters will go well why are you doing all that fancy stuff when this simple stuff would work and that's how it's been working the research that I've been doing for my own personal development in chess, that's how it's happened. You look at all of the main um, main players, because they've been playing for so long, they're trying to find different ways of actually doing, um, actually getting the same position that a lower player, lower level player would get if they did a simple move. And that's causing the issue, and that is causing the problem within the games. Yes, they're really good, don't get me wrong, you know, and they'll wipe, probably wipe the floor with me quite easily. Probably, not even probably, they will. 
but what I'm saying is as I'm developing my game this is what I have seen from my research yeah when the simple person comes along who it usually is a younger person it's not because they've got cleverer concepts or anything it's because they've gone well okay um, this is pretty simple I'll use a smaller piece to attack your higher piece or something along those lines I'm just going to pressure your king area while you're dancing around with some fancy concept that I don't really understand and they end up winning so it's genuinely understanding that if you want to develop your chess it's about understanding the answer and check out the videos that we've done on the answer and um, it's not pretty it's not it's not technical it's, there's no, no major technical knowledge that you need to know about it um, but as a starting point if you're starting out in chess please do have a look at the answer process within uh, chess gym okay just took a while setting up there and um, this series is about fancy dancy gets you all a bit prancy in simple terms you try to be too fancy you don't get the job done in chess as far as I can see from the games I've analysed and watched and observed and been a part of so keeping it simple I don't know what that rook move was there but when you don't know something doesn't mean that it's not right either yeah so the quirkier this opponent's playing, the, the more sensitive I am to the change. So we're attacking this pawn here because we believe there's potential for coming in here and getting a fork. The queen can't go anywhere now, so we can get the queen. So as unusual and fancy, if you like, with the rook and the bishop type moves, they've actually lost a higher piece. But it doesn't mean we've won the game. Just because we've taken the higher piece, we still have to box clever. Uh, let's bring the knight through here now, just develop the pieces, try and work them together as a team. Could capture the pawn here, because there's nothing worse than getting overly confident just because you've taken the higher piece off. Just gradually push the pawn up here, maybe try and suffocate the king a bit. And as you can see, I'm trying to work my pieces together still. So now it's coming down with a single attack it looks like towards something and really want to develop this dark square bishop i bring it out here protecting this pawn because his bishop's attacking here oh 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 his rook could have taken our bishop i should have talked it through first before i actually made the move so we'll bring the bishop here attacking his knight now yeah so that was an oversight like i say i am human his um Knight's not protected now, so we can actually take the knight with an x ray through to the king. This bishop's on our pawn, we've got two pieces protecting there at the moment. So we're trying to keep it simple. He's got two pieces now on this pawn. His bishop could have taken our pawn as well, actually. we push this pawn to protect the pawn then a smaller piece will be taking a higher piece if he takes with the rook or the uh, bishop moves the rook back we can now push through to the center onto his um, rook his bishop's got this diagonal onto our pawn here and then he's got his uh, bishop on our knight if we do do that could bring the queen here looking to um, attack this unprotected pawn at the moment I'm conscious now our time is running down so they may start just moving fast just to wear um, flaggers so might need to speed up a bit so the queen is on this pawn also on the rook so the rook's got no defense so we'll capture the rook and now we're in front of the king but he's protecting with the bishop but the bishop doesn't have any protection so we can take the bishop off and there's potential for pushing the pawn here but I don't want his king escaping but the knights and the bishop are blocking this square here so potentially we're getting close to a checkmate position but there's no, it's not set in stone yet and we'll 
gonna go with the bishop because the bishop's attacking the rook and the rook is trapped in the corner so his knight will probably come through but then we can take his rook with the queen got 40 seconds left there's no increment on this so he does move his knight so capture and I think that might be the game so fancy dancy gets you all prancy in a sense so uh, let's just go here with the queen we've gone for simple but it's not over yet the opponent's still playing so bishop's under attack we can leave the bishop or we can just bring the bishop here here to protect this pawn so the knight doesn't come round and um, get the rook so it's nothing worse in a one game where you sort of fluff it and what they've got one piece and somehow they end up uh, winning pushing pawns past and etc so he's actually grabbed so we'll grab here or oh, there's a stalemate 17 so now we're into pressure time and checkmate bishop diagonal king has nowhere to go so i think that was a nice example of um prancy dancy gets you all prancy to try and keep it simple direct to the point i have watched recently only today actually uh, like grandmaster games where i've seen a lot of fancy dancy moves going on and i've looked at the evaluation afterwards and uh you know with the with the computer and everything and i've, I've looked at the moves and I've, I've even said even the computer's gone well i don't really know what that was yeah you could have just done this simple move here you could have done that simple move there so I might have mentioned it a while back where um, sometimes the higher level people they do all these fancy moves to end up in the same type of position that you or I would end up in if we'd just done a simple move like either take the pawn off or just take a minor piece off or whatever um, and it's, it's quite surreal to see that so I'm not in awe at this type of play I'm in awe at play that is effective and um, efficient and very much a proper strategical sort of game plan um, not just a fancy dancy prancy move just to make you um, look good and you're actually getting the same result as a lower rated player would get if they just took the piece off the board or positioned their piece in a simple way how to look deeper into the answer to chess part three pressure onto this pawn it's opened up his king area big style so maybe we can take advantage of that let's just move the knight for now let's move it again and let's just capture this uh, I think I'll just take here I don't see any problems with that let's grab here and we could put up but there's no pin there's nothing behind it really is it a waste of a move is he just gonna let's attack it yeah double his pawn so there we go capture or oh, ca castle sorry not capture moves his king off of the line so he's had to do an extra bit of work bishop attacking the king yeah make them pay the price for that and he's active with the knight I'm hunting his bishop obviously he's hunting our rook let's get the open file and don't need to tap capture let's push past let's touch onto the bishop here what's his knight doing yeah okay going for the block let's just um, put more pressure on the bishop again he's captured our knight okay our pawns on his knight captures this pawn here I'm not sure that that was uh, I'm actually going to attack his knight mm -hmm.
Attacking our rook, but our rook can put a check on his king. So I may as well do that. I thought it looked funny. I don't really want to move the bishop there, so let's just bring that back. Um, we could attack his knight. I suppose his rook's just going to defend here, I suppose. We could take this pawn. And oh, has he done something good for us there? Maybe not. Let's just grab this pawn. So he's attacking, and he's looking all huffy and puffy. Let's um, put a check on the king here. Expect him to go down. Could push the pawn up. His king is out in the open, or the knight takes. Or we could just grab this pawn, his pawn takes, rook comes down. Let's grab the pawn. Let's put a check on with this rook. And then put a check on with this rook and checkmate. Okay, so the answer to chess, keeping it nice and simple. Looking deeper into the answer to chess. And the deepness is as deep as you want it to go within the time scales that you've got within the games that you're playing. Okay, so let's start from the top. So this all happened fairly quickly. Push through the center. It's not to say that there were perfect moves, so we'll look at the evaluation. And we captured with the knights, so it wasn't too bad apparently. So we pushed on to this. Oh, we didn't see this queen thing. Man, I must have been thinking too fast. Look, we can check. Brought the knight down. Brought the knight down again. Still going for that queen stuff. Okay. And then we captured. So we're not looking in bad shape actually. I'm just waiting to see if there's any dips. We captured. Castled. Attacked. All simple stuff. Developed the knight developed further we had our target in sight which was the bishop they moved it though so they attacked us uh, oh I didn't see that one I missed that didn't I knight check on the king yeah I pushed the pawn instead it doesn't look that bad either okay whoa the rook move uh, we put pressure on the bishop okay and then we doubled up so it's still not showing as bad, that's all right. Pressure in the knight, knight captures. Yeah, even that captures, good for us. Oh, that was bad, look at that. The knight should have taken there. Oh, look at the fork. Look at that fork, oh, that's not clever. Ooh, dear of me. Oh yeah, they went the wrong way. Ooh, damn, yeah, okay. It's good to evaluate your games. Yeah. Okay, so. Came through and then eventually it seemed to get a little bit tense and tight. And a bit fraught for the opponent. So, yeah. When you do your evaluations and you look at your games, especially when I look back at my games and I see those errors, um, it is quite scary. But your opponent's got to take advantage of them, you know, so in in further evaluation and if you see that the opponent does take advantage of it, then you know not to do those types of things potentially again, you know. It's really quite hard, you've got to put it into practice. Um, whatever you're learning from your evaluation, you've got to try and put it into practice as best possible. I'm constantly trying to do it and I'm still constantly making loads of positional errors, etc. But one thing that is really standing out is that I'm able to come back from those ugly positions that I'm in and somehow get advantages with the majority of the time, which is good, you know, because I'm not a computer, yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grab this um, understanding of how it is that those really, really good guys or girls or kids actually get to beat the really good guys <laughs> you know or girls or kids 
and this is how they're doing it yeah they're not making perfect moves all the time but then they're taking advantage of the smallest of weaknesses that are in their opponent's game okay how to look deeper into the answer to chess just uh, nice and steady away it isn't about speed even if you're playing a fast game it's about quality of the moves Let's just capture here just keep it simple way 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 too many players I've watched spend so much time thinking about speed and actually applying speed and not looking at the quality of the moves knight attacking the pawn here on the sly so then they miss out on the structure of their development of the pieces as far as I can see anyway that's based on my own experience just thinking hard comes and protects eventually okay so I bring the bishop through here looking for a discover check on the queen it's not supported at the minute so it, I can't do anything too grand So now they're taking the time and focusing, but it's usually sometimes too late in the game, you know, they do the first few moves, bang, 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 and then they think, whoa, let's slow down here, let's try and get the right moves in place, but it's usually kind of too late. So we could capture the pawn, no, no real issues with that, um, we could push this pawn here just to support the bishop, he can always push his pawn down. I'm actually just going to do a basic thing and support the bishop in readiness for the knight to just jump somewhere. That's as basic as I can put that because it's got a discover check on his queen so the knight can jump freely. So he probably should move his queen. He's not moved his queen. Okay. Maybe he's thinking he doesn't have to move his queen. Mm, well, could go for his rook. Oh, is he's, oh, he's got a two on one actually here. So his queen could actually take this pawn. Drat. Well, okay, that's a horse of a different colour. I didn't actually see that. I was grandiose in about my discovery check with my bishop. And all the while he's got like a two on one here. So his queen is pretty safe. Although they haven't seen it and they've resigned. <laughs> I just want to play it back though because I'm thinking maybe there isn't, it's not as grand as we're thinking. Because his queen takes, our queen takes, his bishop takes, then our knight takes his rook anyway. And it's actually for free at that moment. His bishop can then take our knight, but yeah, that works out okay. Hmm, let's look at the analysis just to make sure. Yeah, so yeah, queen coming down, taking. And oh, he's actually saying take the take the rook. Interesting. What was I saying? If I took, then his bishop takes, and then the knight takes the rook, and it's a draw. Damn. Okay, draw is better than a loss. So fair enough. And then it would have brought. That's a computer doing it though. So I don't know what the opponent would have played from there. So it wasn't a bad move, either way. You know, moving the knight looking deeper into the answer to chess looking deeper into the answer to chess part three okay so ooh, let's go here old school let's attack the queen and he wants to develop his knight so let's just capture and then the knight comes through putting pressure onto our this pawn here so let's just push this pawn up this knight's getting into some sort of groove yeah, let's bring the bishop here. Wants to get out rid of our knight. Let's uh, let's give this a little touch. Um, knight has to make a decision. Doesn't make a decision just yet. Let's capture. Okay, so they're down a bit of minor material at the moment because of that. We could push onto his pawn here rather than activating his knight. His knight goes around. We haven't got anything defending. Yeah, we can, I suppose. Doesn't go around. I thought it was going to go around the back. Okay, so the bishop could take, activating his pawn in the front. 
Uh, let's do that. And let's uh, castle. Ooh, it's getting all testy. Let's go here, attacking this pawn. Uh, knight wants to get into the action. Let's go here, attacking the quote, bishop. And then the knight wants to just get into a bit of situation. Bishop probably come in, protect maybe the pawn, but he gets on pass on. Um, doesn't do that, so we'll capture this pawn here, which we plan to do. Uh, we could do that, activates his rook. Let's just push past. Push this pawn onto the bishop. He's pushing onto our rook first. Could go here with the rook. Uh, let's attack his rook here and the pawn at the same time. Um, issue we've got, look how fast he moved them with that. <laughs> let's go here with the bishop protecting. Again, now the bishop is kind of trapped, so he probably needs to move one of these pawns before. Yeah, oh, he's actually gone to the front. Let's go here. Rook can come in front of this pawn. I don't think there's anything that can protect it, so he's uh, coming down now, attacking twice on this side. Let's go here. That pawn can take. Let's just keep pushing this pawn. And he pushes onto our rook. Let's just bring this rook up a bit. So we're up a minor piece actually from all of that um, skirmishing and the bishop can actually take this pawn here now that he's concentrating on this pawn. We can push here, this pawn is not going to survive but at least we'll um, be up the rook. Could bring this bishop here I suppose, double protection. And then just put a check on the king, comes across attacking our bishop, just bring the bishop here. He's only got one piece, well I thought his rook was going to take actually. Um, I think his rook is going to take, isn't he? And, oh, they've resigned. So that was quite a lot of pressure there. And let's have a look at the analysis. It all happened fairly, fairly quickly. Let's see if there's any major dips. Okay, so this is old school opening from white. And the queen comes through, attacking the queen. I decided to take this time. Sometimes I just leave the queen there, develop the bishop, that type of thing. But I thought, well, let's take it off the ball, keep it simple. Uh, computer doesn't like that. It's giving advantage to white at the minute. So we wanted to block off the, the knight. So white is looking really tasty now. And we brought the bishop through, defending and attacked the knight. He's capturing. And at this moment in time now, we're starting to really get into the groove, just for a moment anyway, because the knight was not defended. So we capture pushed onto the knight, kept minimal pressure going, we wanted to keep our base going quite nicely, nice attack there with the bishop, but probably left it there too long because not working his pieces together, so then the rook can take the pawn, just push past, look into exchange, yeah so we've got advantage now for, for, from the rest of this, yes. And we push forward. Is there anything else? Yeah, we capture. I think there's a moment where I think he could have taken the pawn, but even still, we would have still been a rook up. Okay, so then we went for the exchange. Okay, so looking deeper into the answer to chess. It's as deep as you want it to be. Keep it as simple as you want it to be, then the deepness doesn't need to be that deep. You can be nice and shallow nice easy waters just a nice tread through take your time yeah but the deeper you go the more hassle and trouble you're going to get and the more complicated it gets okay back into the real chest back into keeping it nice and simple straightforward nice simple strategy just boom just attack the knight here then we've got a check on the king he's got a choice does he go with the queen or does he yeah develop his bishop and is there something we can actually do here let's just castle and develop don't want to go crazy and he's looking for a discover check on our queen could move the queen here looks interesting there Let's go here. Holding the bishop to ransom for a bit. Let's go here now. 
that nice diagonal with the right. so it's rook's gone now so rook's gone into hiding but i'm not going to rush it so i'm going to develop first maybe put a bit of pressure on the queen this bishop potentially we're looking at could still go with that you know but uh, could capture as well let's go here can't put pressure on the queen just yet now now he's looking to condense down onto our queen and he's now it's condensed onto our knight so we can go here but then his knight takes our knight we take yeah okay yeah attack his knight we take the bishop because we're on his queen he's not going to have that so we can take the knight uh, oh oh did you see that horrible situation let's put a little bit of a touch on the knight bishop takes then the queen takes and then they're up so we can oh look at what's happening oh my gosh look at what's happening so we're going to grab and then we're going to grab whoa going to block this um, bishop and the pawn and we'll bring the rook here for ownership of the file if he does capture he doesn't capture he's looking to own it himself let's just grab and let's just grab let's just push this pawn blocking let's get the king up his king is not fast enough now could block in the middle here could go here let's just attack the bishop and he's not doing any of that so let's grab go here and may have lost the tempo I'm believing let's see if we move that his bishop takes let's just take it steady one move at a time pawn up let's move this king interesting situation let's just go here blocking off the king looks like a draw really uh, but to check here with the king lovely jubbly yeah it looks like a kind of draw to me all right so uh, could just keep going backwards and forwards with the bishops don't really see a way oh he's going for a capture she captures then I'm lost on tempo aren't I uh, let's go here because his king will drop there then I have to move to the side he can't really come down though yeah so if I go here with my bishop protecting this pawn if I push onto this pawn he takes takes gives me something to do doesn't it bishop's now protecting that pawn for now and king is up a little bit so let's go here now let's attack his bishop his bishop don't want to play is there a pawn that we can attack up here 29 seconds so I don't think we're going to have a chance to do much if we move a bit swifter let's grab this pawn he's going to protect with his bishop on that side let's go back up now he's coming for our pawn let's just bring the king here so he's going to move backwards and forwards and let's go here so he loses a pawn if he moves and let's go here I think I might lose some time <laughs> let's go here oh if we grab that horse of a different colour. It goes across, down, middle. Oh, he's doing that um, triangle thing. Draw! Yay! Okay, so the whole idea, again, with the answer, it isn't about, you know, getting the win it's about understanding how to not lose up to a point as well so i'm losing a lot less um in my games and um, than i used to do before because
because I'm trying to understand more patterns, trying to understand more rhythms, especially in this end game bit here. I probably made some errors and I'm going to have a look at the analysis now and see if I can put them into my mental Rolodex. So let's have a look. I think we did a bit of... Yeah, so that's nice and simple, that's straightforward. Attacking the knight doesn't like that. Uh, oh, what, what's this bishop move? Bishop taking the pawn. Uh, yeah, that might be a bit too much for me. So we captured. Kind of equalizing. Oh, it looks a little bit better for us here. Uh, he doesn't like that bishop move. Oh, because of the bishop coming to here to there it's going to put pressure on this pawn because it's only got the queen support okay nice and then we did a bit of fancy dancing well <laughs> no we, we moved it I think appropriately computer doesn't like it move the queen down now we're putting pressure onto the F pawn so I think that worked out okay I, I like the movement of that yeah i would probably still do the same and developing the knight doesn't like that type of movement Okay, what movement did it want? Oh no, I'm not. I'm not into that pawn move. I'm sorry. I won't. Put, I won't put that in my mental Um